So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's class, um, which is on lecture nine, effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy in promoting growth. So this is also another topic, but it's going to be a bit of an extension to the previous topic that we have, which is on classical and Keynesian macroeconomics, the aggregate demand and aggregate supply framework. So in that aspect, I've tried to look at the theoretical basis for the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model, all right? Borrowing from our ISLM framework, when we discuss the IS model, we discuss the LM model, we link the two together to develop the aggregate demand model. And then we also discuss the labor market, the supply of labor and the demand of labor. And then we also developed the two to, um, we linked the two to develop the aggregate supply model. And then we looked at the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model to understand the dynamics and what happens there. And then from there, we also considered the short run aggregate supply model. And then we also considered the long run aggregate supply model. Okay. So we have done um, this. That particular topic we've discussed is broad. This is now an extension of that particular first topic. Okay. All right, so, so that particular um, topic, all right, this topic is an extension of that particular topic, okay, um, which is on um, lecture nine. Of course, lecture eight talks about um, inflation, unemployment, the Phillips curve and stagflation, all right? But I want to treat this particular topic, which is the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy in promoting growth, which is an offshoot of that particular lecture eight. So principally, what we are simply asking ourselves is, given that we have two major demand side policies, all right, which is the monetary and fiscal policy. The question we ask ourselves is, which one is more effective or which one should we do or when should we actually do any of such all right so we know that the two demand side policies we have is the fiscal and monetary policy then we are asking ourselves a simple question how effective is this particular policy all right when we consider the economy when we consider the period we are in you can recall that under the aggregate demand and the supply framework we discussed we have two periods the short run period and the long run period so in the short run period of course you know that for the Keynesian the aggregate supply curve is flat however in the medium run okay that aggregate, aggregate supply curve is upward sloping and looks like the curve, all right, of the normal AS curve that is upward sloping from the left to the right. And then in the long run, Keynes and classical is they agreed the aggregate supply curve is vertical. So the question now is which of these policies is effective? At what point should we say this policy is effective? When we are trying to promote growth, what do we do? Those are the questions that we need to answer. And then I'll be using graph to just explain that. Two things we'll consider. The first one, how effective is fiscal and monetary policy in promoting growth when you consider the ISLM, okay? When you consider just the ISLM framework, you should be able to understand which of the policies, fiscal or monetary policy is effective in promoting growth. Again, 
we can also consider the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy, two of them together, in promoting growth under the aggregate demand, aggregate supply framework, simply because under the aggregate demand, aggregate supply framework, both policies yield the same effect on aggregate demand. You must understand that. So if you take up expansionary fiscal policy or expansionary monetary policy, both of them will definitely cause a shift in the aggregate demand curve. So we look at them as one, all right? That is what we do, we look at them as one. So we would be using um, graphs to actually explain each of these particular um, scenarios, just for us to understand what happens. So for the first one, all right, we will consider the effectiveness, okay? For the first one, we are going to consider um, the effectiveness, all right, of the IS effectiveness of um, fiscal and monetary, all right, policy, okay, under the ISLM framework okay so let's consider the effectiveness of that under the is framework all right in promoting growth okay so let's consider these two to know which one is effective in promoting what growth so you recall okay that your is framework is of this nature if you can recall all right okay and you know that this is your IS, okay? And you know that this is your LM. So you know that this is your output Y, and this tells, talks about the what interest rates are, all right? So remember that in promoting growth as a policy, all we are trying to do is we are looking for a best scenario in which output can increase, all right? That's one of the best scenarios. So first of all, we consider expansionary monetary policy, okay? When we consider expansionary monetary policy, of course, your LM curve shifts outward, all right? We now have LM1. So this shifts outward. And when this shifts outward, this was our initial point A, okay? But now we'll be having another point, point B, okay? So what happens? You can see that there's an increase in output, all right? While what happened to interest rate? Interest rate actually declined, okay? From R to R1, two. When we consider an expansionary monetary policy, if we consider expansionary monetary policy, then it leads to what? Increase in what? In your output, okay? And when its output increases, there is a what? A fall in what? Interest what? Rate. Then we consider the second one. We consider, um, of course, contractionary, um, um, contractionary of monetary policy, of course, is the opposite of this, okay? And um, I don't think I should be considering it. I will just tell you what happens to it, okay? But let's look at uh, the other aspect, expansionary fiscal policy, expansionary, fiscal what policy, all right? So for expansionary fiscal policy, this is our IS, all right? This is our LM framework, okay? And this is the output, and this is the what? Interest rate, okay? So what happens for expansionary? We have our IS curve shifting what? Outward, all right? To IS1. And then that causes what? An increase in what? In IS, leading to an increase in what? In output. Okay? 
and then we have an increase in what interest rate okay which is what r1 all right and then we can consider the policy mix of course where we have both expansionary fiscal policy as well as expansionary monetary policy okay so we'll talk about this this is my is this is my ln okay so uh, y and this is a um, r okay then we consider we have an expansionary monetary policy lm okay and we also have an expansionary fiscal policy is okay Okay. So we consider IS. Okay. IS1, LM1. All right. This is a new point we have here. Okay. And this point we have here. Um, is y1 okay all right and then you see that i r remains unchanged okay so what can we say here this is for expansionary fiscal policy all right and expansionary what monetary policy so look at the implications we can draw here okay look at the implications we can draw here okay so for expansionary monetary policy what happens income increases while what interest rate does what declines okay that is the first Thing we know okay for expansionary fiscal policy what happens income increases and interest what rate also does what also increases all right then for expansionary of course looking at the graph if you draw it contractionary monetary policy what happens on that contractionary monetary policy income declines and interest rate does what interest rate what increases okay and then what happens to contractionary fiscal policy for contractionary fiscal policy of course what will happen output will decline income will decline okay as well as what as well as what interest rates okay then but however if you look at expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy then what will happen note if they increase in the same proportion if they increase in the same proportion what happens output increases and what interest what rate remains what unchanged okay so it therefore means that if, for example, you want to pursue, um, um, let me say, output growth, okay, and ensuring that the money market remains stable, then there's a need for you to take up monetary policy and fiscal policy mix, the expansionary monetary policy and expansionary fiscal policy but however if your objective is to increase output okay 
as well as trigger some capital flows, all right, in the money market, then your objective must be to increase output as well as increase interest rates, okay? And that means your expansionary fiscal policy becomes the what? The best option. So it depends on your policy objective. Your policy objective will actually tell you the best policy mix for you to follow, okay? It will tell you this is the best policy mix that you have to follow, okay? Again, let's also now look at the effectiveness of these policies depending on the elasticity of your what? IS curve depending on the what elasticity of your is curve all right so what do i mean by my elasticity elasticity of is curve these um monetary policies and fiscal policies they can have varying level of impact depending on how elastic or how inelastic your is curve responds to interest rates Remember that in the IS curve, responding to interest rate, investment is the main channel through which your IS curve responds to interest rate. So assuming your IS curve is very flat, look at it. Your IS curve is very flat. Let me, let me use, um, let me consider the one that is, you know, pretty flat. Assuming your IS curve is flat like this. And then this is your what? LM. So this is your LM, all right? And this is your what? IS, okay? What does that mean? It means that any change in output, look at it, this is your output. This is your interest rate, all right? This is your what? Output. It means investment will will change greatly when there is a little change in interest rate. That's the meaning. Once your IS curve is a bit flat, that tells you that your investment is going to do what change greatly whenever there is what? An increase, a slight increase in your interest rate, okay? So under that scenario, the question we ask ourselves is, what policy measure can we actually do what? Fake. For example, if you take up expansionary monetary policy, look at it, expansionary monetary policy. What happens? You see that output increases greatly while interest rates will actually do what? Decline slightly. Note that output will do what? Will increase greatly, okay? while what interest rate declines slightly. This is what expansionary what monetary policy, okay? Let's now consider expansionary fiscal policy, given that same level of what? Flatness of your what? Investment, IS, okay? And then you have your normal what? LM. Okay, and recall, these are your initial what? Points of what? Equilibrium, Y, and then R, okay? So that means if, for example, you take up expansionary fiscal policy, what happens? You see that the same proportion, okay? of increase in what interest rate all right is the same proportion of increase in what in output the same proportion okay now let's consider the curve at which your investment is highly inelastic consider the curve at which your investment is highly inelastic and see what happens. This is your LM, 
and this is your what? IS. All right. That means interest rate does not really respond to changes. All right. Output investment, sorry, does not really respond to changes in what? In interest rate. Investment slightly responds. Okay. So if investment slightly responds, let's consider the expansionary monetary policy. Look at it. Expansionary monetary policy to LM1. And you ask yourself, what happens? Look at it. Output increases slightly, all right? While your what? Interest rate will decline greatly. Have you seen it? Output increases slightly, and then your interest rate will do what? Decline greatly. And let's also consider that particular scenario, all right? For, let's consider that particular scenario for the expansionary fiscal policy, okay? Remember, your expansionary fiscal policy is somehow flat, okay? Your expansionary fiscal policy is flat, all right? And then you have your, um, your LM, okay? LM, and you have your IS. So remember, you still have your initial point. And then let's consider an expansionary what? Fiscal policy, expansionary fiscal policy. So when you have an expansionary fiscal policy, look at what happens. The same proportion, output will increase, interest rate will increase, okay? In the same what? Proportion, in the same proportion. You will discover one thing. So look at the things we are going to discover or the conclusions you are going to draw. All right. One, the first conclusion we are drawing is that the, the elasticity, okay, the elasticity of IS curve determines the effectiveness of what? monetary policy. You need to understand that. The elasticity of your IS curve will determine the effectiveness of monetary policy. When your IS curve, okay, was highly elastic, monetary policy was more effective in increasing output. <laughs> okay? When your IS curve was inelastic, monetary policy was not effective in increasing what output. It only declined interest rate greatly. Okay, so the elasticity of your IS curve determines the effectiveness of your what monetary policy. When the IS is elastic, okay, what happens? Monetary policy is what more effective in increasing what output okay but when is curve is inelastic what does that tell you monetary policy was what weak in what improving in improving what IS in improving what output. That is a major submission you need to understand. In that vein, that also tells you that you can reverse this particular scenario, okay? And say that the elasticity of your what? LM curve determines the effectiveness of what? Of fiscal policy. You can say that whether you're IS curve is elastic or inelastic, it does not matter. 
on fiscal policy. If your IS curve is elastic, your IS curve is inelastic, you have the same policy effect on interest rates and output. Because remember that increasing interest rate and increasing output is not the best. Because when you are increasing output and you are increasing interest rate, remember the cost of borrowing still increases and that will hunt back what? Investment, which will also hunt what? Output. So now your elasticity of your other curve determines the effectiveness of the policy that comes from the other side of the market. So in your IS market, your, 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 your commodity market, the elasticity of that IS curve there determines the effectiveness of your monetary policy that is coming from the money market. In the same vein, all right, in the money market, the LM curve there, the elasticity of that particular money market determines how effective your fiscal policy will be. So that is why when government is trying to pursue fiscal and monetary policy, remember the agents that are, in, that, that, are, that are responsible for fiscal policy is what? Is the Ministry of Finance, all right, of an economy, okay? The Ministry of Finance, which is in charge of budget, the expenditure and revenue framework of the government. While the agent in charge of monetary policy is what? The Monetary Authority, which is the CBN, the, cent the, 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 the central bank, all right, of the economy. What does that tell you? That tells you that when they are trying to pursue policy, there is a need for them to look at the elasticity of IS with respect to interest rate. Okay, that is when the monetary authority is trying to consider a policy. Again, when the government is also trying to consider a policy, the Minister of Finance, the Minister, the government, there's a need for them to consider the elasticity of the LM curve with respect to interest rates. Because that elasticity will determine how effective that policy will be. So that means the elasticity of the LM curve determines the effectiveness of what? Fiscal policy. Again, from there you can see when LM is elastic, okay? When LM is what? It's elastic. Remember, when LM is elastic, it is flat, okay? It's flat. What happens? It means that fiscal policy is more effective in increasing output. Once LM is flat, it's elastic. But when LM curve, all right, is inelastic, what happens? Fiscal policy will be weak in improving what? Output. This is very, very important, okay? This is very, very what important, okay? Look at the case of the LM. Look at the case of that LM that I was discussing with you. Look at the weakness of that LM, all right? You see, LM is a bit flat. And then we have our IS following the normal um, relationship, okay? This is the initial point, all right? This is the initial point. This is your interest rate, okay? Now, let's take up what? An expansionary fiscal policy. And look at what happens. Look at how Y increased. And look at how, oh, sorry. Let me draw it in a perfect way. And look at how R increased, okay? You see, that, that fulfills our condition that when LM is elastic, fiscal policy is more effective in increasing output. You can see it. When LM is elastic, Fiscal policy is more what? Effective. Look at the output, increase in output. Compare that to the increase in interest rates. All right? So that should give you 
a sense of what is really happening in Nigeria, one thing you discover is that that is why sometimes some people will tell you, oh, monetary policy is not effective. Some will tell you at this point in time, fiscal policy is the main thing. Some will tell at this point in time, is monetary policy you should pursue. If your money market and your capital market is not well developed, you will hardly see people responding to changes in interest rates. And that is what is happening in Nigeria. That is what is happening in Nigeria. Most times, the money market is not effective. The money market does not respond to changes in interest rate. And that is why for the past years, the central bank governor and the monetary policy committee, they've always pegged monetary policy rate at a particular rate. Always 12%. 11.5%, it can be 12% for the next four years, five years. Go and check the data. It can be. Let's even see it. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I need to. Okay, I will show you the data when I when I when I turn off my, my whiteboard. All right. So it has always been that way. Because monetary policy is almost ineffective. Monetary LM curve does not always respond to what to interest rates so look at it look at the other curve all right all right remember lm curve is flat okay and then um no this case now oh sorry in this case now lm curve is what is inelastic okay so LM curve, that, that is almost what? A straight line. This is your LM. All right. And this is your what? This is your IS. Okay. And then let's consider expansionary. Fiscal policy. Expansionary what? Fiscal policy and see what happens. On the expansionary fiscal policy, just look at this. IS1, all right. And then look at what happens to output. And then look at what happens to what? to interest rates, okay? That validates what I was saying, okay? That for LM curve, once it's inelastic, IS curve can no longer be effective in improving output. IS curve will only do what? Increase interest rates once your LM curve is inelastic, okay? The same goes to what? When your LM curve is elastic. When your LM curve is also elastic, what happens? Your, your IS curve becomes what? Effective in doing what? In improving output. So when you are considering your policy needs, there is a need for you to consider the elasticity of your curve. All right, it's very, very important to consider the word elasticity of your core. And that explains this particular two sentences. And that tells you, explains why. Sometimes the government tries to pursue fiscal policy measures. And it looks like as if government is not doing anything. It's simply because of the activities in the money market. That's it. Government most times tries to pursue fiscal policy. But it just looks like the government is not doing anything. They're not doing anything. Why? Simply because that particular money market is not effective. Example, remember when government was trying to say, okay, we are selling, we are selling, we need to borrow by selling TBs, treasury bills, in order to finance capital expenditures and the rest. They were doing that. What happened to the money market? Commercial banks diverted to buying of TBs. And they became the agent to sell TBs. They started ordering, oh, sorry, they held on to the TBs 
it became a market for for them not until the federal government has said no 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 see bills rates has fallen flat i think now as low as four three percent is no longer attractive so that activity in the money market determines the effect of your fiscal and monetary policy so that when you see questions that tries to paint a scenario explaining that the monetary policy is flat that is is elastic you should know what will happen to fiscal policy how effective it will be you should know that for monetary policy to yield the same response okay all right that explains the ISLM relation and the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policy. That means the first thing we know is that from our first explanation, expansionary monetary policy, this, was, this, this, this particular slide is basic. It's basic for your year one, year two. Expansionary monetary policy, income increases, okay? Interest rate declines. Expansionary fiscal policy, income increases, interest rate also increase. Contractionary monetary policy, income declines, interest rate increases. Contractionary fiscal policy, income will decline as well as interest rates. Now, remember we want to promote growth. That's why I considered expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. I didn't consider contractionary fiscal policy and contractionary monetary policy. Or again, you can also have expansionary fiscal policy and contractionary monetary policy, and also have contractionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. So you can have those policy mix. But because I want to promote growth, that's why I considered expansionary fiscal policy and expansionary monetary policy. Okay? And under that scenario, what happened? Output increased greatly. Why? interest rate remains unchanged. And we went for that to state that the effectiveness of your fiscal or monetary policy depends on the elasticity of your counterpart. Okay? So if I'm dealing with fiscal policy, the, it depends on the elasticity of the money market, the LM curve. If I'm dealing with the monetary policy, it depends on the elasticity of the IS curve, which is the commodity market. That means when you are doing something in one market, you need to consider the elasticity or how will people respond to this in the other market. It's very, very important. If you are considering monetary policy by declining interest rates, okay, very good one. You need to consider how will investors respond to that particular strategy. So if you decline interest rates and you say oh, interest rate has fallen, will investors be willing to take up massive investment? Very important. If investors are unwilling to take up massive investment, that means your strategy of reducing interest rate does not create any additional drive to promote growth. Because when your strategy focuses on um, um, increasing, in, reducing interest rate. Yes, interest rate has declined by maybe 0 0.5 basis points, maybe, but maybe by one basis point, 100 basis points. If interest rate declines, will investors still be willing or the market will remain the same? That is the same thing that happens at the exchange rate market. When we get to the last topic, you also see it. That same thing happens there. Central bank will be willing to pump in exchange rates, currencies, dollars in the market. How are people willing to respond to it? Very, very critical. Very critical. So if the investment climate is unfriendly and people are allergic to taking up investment decisions or investment opportunities or the security concerns are there, even if you drop interest rate to 5%, from 12% to 5%, that will not still motivate all right, investors to take up an investment decision. And that is the reason people are beginning to talk about the unconventional monetary policy. Unconventional. Unconventional monetary policy. People now talk about it.
Okay? People now talk about it. Unconventional monetary policy. That is, people does not want to follow the normal policy strategy we know. The normal, let's go unconventional. Because people are no longer responding. And this is very common to developing economies. In developed economies, interest rate is a determinant of your investment decision. But here, that is why you will see, if you plot the graph of interest rate and investment, you will see interest rate increasing. Instead of the investment to decline, investment will still be increasing. Did I surprise you? When CBN, before they brought up the policy of investing massively to identify your real sector for the commercial banks, before then, before then, when they allowed them to give out loans, you would see banks giving out loans, all right, to investors. And investors are willing to take it even at higher interest. Even at higher interest rate. Even till now, CBN said, no, give out loans to the real sector. Identify the small and medium scale enterprises. Identify those real sectors and give them loan. That's what CBN is saying now. And CBN has placed a quota that if you give beyond a particular level of loan to the nominal sector, you pay a fine. But you know that banks are willing to pay that fine and charge it as an increase in interest rates. So if banks normally charge 35% interest rates to borrow, bank can tell you, okay, for you that want to borrow to import fuel, it's now 45%. The importer is still willing to borrow at that higher interest rate. Of course, the bank knows that when they pay back their 45%, they can conveniently and comfortably pay the fine of the central bank. So that tells you nowadays people need to start pursuing the unconventional monetary policy method in order to drive the economy. All right. Let's look at the um, the ADAS relation. Okay. The ADAS relation. All right. Now we know that for us to effectively capture um, um, the AS according to Keynes and classicalist, our AS curve will look like this. All right, our AS curve will look like this for us to effectively capture. Please note to in economics, a single line or you draw a single line. Let me erase. In economics, you draw a single line, okay? In economics, you draw a single line. It shouldn't be a shaded line, please. Okay, so this is your AS. All right, and then your AD curve. Can then be like this, this is your AD curve. Okay, this is your AD curve. These are your prices. All right, and this is your output. Okay, now let's also recall that we have our what? Our IS, of course. Okay, we have our what? IS and LM, all right? And then we have the IS, okay? Now, this,
So this must be our AD. All right. And then this is our interest rate. This is the price. This is your output. Of course, this is your long run output. If you trace it down, it's a broken line. It's your long run output, okay? Now this is your short run output, all right? So you know that whether you are pursuing expansionary monetary policy or expansionary fiscal policy, output will increase. The only thing there is one of them, output will increase depending on if, depending on your interest rate. For one, output will increase and interest rate will also increase. The other one, output will increase while interest rate will decrease. For LM, output will increase, interest rate will decline. So LM will have a point somewhere here. Okay? For IS, output will increase while interest rate will increase. IS will have a point here. Okay? So whether you are pursuing, um, whether you are pursuing expansionary, okay? Fiscal policy, what happens? We know that IS will be here. Then we have interest rate increasing, but output has increased, okay? Or you are pursuing expansionary monetary policy. We know that LM will increase outward, okay? To LM1, all right? And then we know that this is still going to be the point. Just that we are going to have what? A lower interest rate. So whichever one you are pursuing, the only implication is that we know output will increase. But for one, interest rate will be high, higher. For the other, interest rate will be lower. But our concern is output will what? Increase. When output increases, we can trace it down. All right? We can trace it down. Okay? And what happens? Aggregate demand will shift outward to AD what? AD1. Aggregate demand will shift outward to AD1 while output does what increases. While output does what increases. All right. Okay. Now let's now repeat this particular analysis. All right. And then let's have Let's have this analysis here. Okay. All right. You repeat this. You have your IS, you have your LM. Please, in the exam, make sure you label your graph. Don't go and draw a line. I did not label it. It is zero. I'm begging you. You see the way I take my time to label the graph. Okay. Let's now assume that the economy was here. Let me make that assumption that the economy was here. I want the economy to be at. Uh, 
the medium run. Let's assume that the economy was here. Okay. So let's assume that the economy was here. So sorry that it's just the board. So this is IS, okay? I would have referred you and say you draw, but I just want to satisfy my conscience and ensure I'm drawing it, all right? Uh -huh. So let's assume this was the initial curve. So this is my AD. Okay, it's lapsed in this point, sorry. So this is my AD. This is the initial output. This was the initial what? Price. Okay, and then we take up an expansionary either fiscal policy or monetary policy, whichever one. Let's assume we are taking up expansionary um, um, expansionary fiscal policy, all right? Let's assume we are taking up, or uh, let's assume we are taking up expansionary monetary policy. So we have something like this, LM one, okay? And this falls here. What happens? Your, this is AD. Your AD curve will then move what move outward to a d1 your a d curve moves outward to a d1 okay and then that leads to what an increase in what in price price increases price increases when price increases what happens your output will also what? Increase. Okay? Okay? Your output increases. All right? This was the initial interest rate. Interest rate has declined. Okay. Price increased. Here, price is not changed. All right? Let's now look at the final region, which is the long run. The final region, which is the long run. Right? We still have our model okay um, okay and then we have this same call All right, let me just draw. We assume the economy is in this region. This is your IS, this is the long run. This is your LM. This is your LM. All right. Okay. So this is your LM. Then let's now assume there is expansionary monetary policy again.
all right? In that expansion of monetary policy, output will increase, okay? Remember, this was your aggregate demand in the long run, okay? And when output increases, your aggregate demand will still shift what? Outward to AD1, or oh, sorry, this becomes AD2. Your output here remains unchanged. This is the output in the long run. It still remains what? Unchanged. Because this AS curve is not shifting. This is where the AS curve is. But AD has increased. And this was the initial AD curve point. This was the initial price. This is now the new AD curve. Look at it. Price one. What happens? Price increase while output remained unchanged. So what implications can we draw from all of this? All right. So let's draw our implications now. The first implication we can draw from this is that in the short run, when the AS is flat, that is when the AS is horizontal, when the AS is horizontal, okay? When the AS is what? Horizontal. All right. What happens when the AS is horizontal in the short run? Okay. Fiscal policy and monetary policy is highly what? Effective in what? Increasing what? Output is highly effective in increasing what? Output without a change in what? In price. Let's consider the second scenario. In the intermediate period, in the intermediate period, okay? Where your what? That in the intermediate period where your In the intermediate period, where your AS is upward sloping, what happens? Fiscal policy and monetary policy is moderately effective in increasing what? I don't know if you can see what I'm typing. I said, can you respond? Can you see what I'm typing? Okay, so what happens in the intermediate um, run? In the intermediate run, where your AS is upward sloping, fiscal policy and monetary policy is moderately effective in stimulating output with a proportional increase in what? in prices, that's the keyword, okay? What now happens in the long run? In the long run, when your AS is what? Is vertical, what happens? Fiscal policy and monetary policy is not what? Effective. That is the concept of what? The neutrality of fiscal policy and monetary policy. That tells you the behavior of your 
ADAS in the short run, in the intermediate period, and in the long run. In that long run, what happens? Your output does not change while your prices does what increases. And that conforms to the idea of Friedman when he said money inflation is what a monetary phenomenon that when you increase monetary policy if you increase money supply it will only lead to a corresponding increase in what in prices a proportional increase in what in prices and that was explained by the classicalist long-grown aggregate supply curve so that neutrality of money in the long run as designed by the classicalists was further confirmed by Friedman when he was discussing his what is monetary policies, money theories, MV equals to PQ. All right. So that means you need to understand the effectiveness of monetary and fiscal policy. All right. With respect to the period you are in, with respect to the period you are in. So you need to identify first, are we in the long run or we are in the short run? Are we in the intermediate period? That tells you what would be the effectiveness of such particular what policies. All right, what would be the effectiveness of such particular what policy? Either in the short run or in the what? In the long run. Okay, so let me take um, questions to round up this particular topic. Yes, Akinwale, your ends is up. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Sir, in the, um, in the last um, drawing that you just gave us, sir, you okay. said in the intermediate, uh, in the long run, AS is vertical when the fiscal policy and monetary policy is not effective. That's the neutrality. But you only drew um, the LM, the, only the LM shifted, which is the uh, monetary policy, sir. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, when, I, when I was explaining, whether it's fiscal policy or monetary policy is the same. The, okay, the sir. same effect will occur in output. Remember right. that when I'm tracing from my ISLM, tracing it down to ADS, I only consider my output. Yes, sir. <laughs> so whether it is fiscal, mon fiscal policy or monetary policy, whether it's any of them, once it's expansionary, yes, sir. output demand in that place, in that market will increase. That will okay, cause your AD to actually do what? Increase. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Molashun um, Lawal. Thank you, sir. Um, putting some of these things into perspective, why do you think monetary policy and fiscal policy are ineffective in the long run, sir? Okay. Now, putting them in a the proper perspective is just the perspective of the classicalist. All right. And when we say a policy is ineffective, the objective of monetary policy or fiscal policy is output growth. That's the objective. The objective of government policy, whether it's exchange rate policy, whether it's trade policy, whatever policy it is, the objective of that policy is to ensure output growth. That's the objective of the policy. Having said that is the objective of that policy, that means whenever a policy does not achieve that particular purpose, we say that that policy is ineffective. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, when we look at the ISLM, we look at fiscal monetary policy, they are not effective in stimulating output in the long run. That is why it is not effective. Why? The classicalists have said that whenever there is an increase, all right, in demand, for example, maybe money supply, which is monetary policy, 
once there's an increase in that demand monetary policy, it does not transmit to a, an increase in output. Remember, in the aggregate supply, you're talking about the real sector. That is where production actually takes place. So the classicalists are saying that whenever there's an increase in money supply, you are empowering people to demand for more goods. It does not translate to increases in output. The only thing that happens is that it translates only to increases in price and not increases in output. So that is the theory behind that monetary policy and fiscal policy is not effective in the long run. Have I answered your question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, Elizabeth. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. Um, sir, please, I don't understand this last um, graph, sir, for the long run. From okay. um, the part where um, there was an expansionary monetary policy. Okay. From that part, I didn't get how you you um, did the AD2 and the P1. I didn't get that. You know, okay, you know that, you know that for, let's look at this, this part, the medium, okay? In that medium run, all right? In the medium run, when LM increased, output shifted, okay, increased. Okay, output increased from here to here, all right? Output increased. And because your AS curve is upward sloping, even when your AD curve increased, it increased from here down to here, all right? Okay, now let's now look at this long run in the long run at this long run as curve here is vertical look at it this is the long run this is the long run you see that as curve is vertical yes you pursue expansionary fiscal policy or expansionary monetary policy whichever one this case is expansionary monetary policy and output will increase why the demand increased okay y to y1 that caused ad to increase from ad1 to ad2 you cannot trace it down here you can't because there is no aggregate supply in this part this part is unattainable following your production possibility curve, your production possibility frontier, if you remember. So you will still have to go back to your initial output. That is your optimum output. That is your output in the long run. So you only show it by changing your AD from AD1 to AD2. And when you do that, your output cannot change in the long run, your real output but your prices is the only thing that will actually do what change. Have I been able to answer the question? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, Ishala. Ishala, you raised your hand. Okay, maybe it's an error. So that means we all understand this particular, um, um question because well, somebody said please sir what happens when there is inelasticity in expansionary fiscal policy uh -uh. what will be elast inelastic are you saying when your is curve is inelastic if your is curve is inelastic what that means is that your is curve does not respond to changes in interest rates that means what that means is if interest rate increases investment will not decline substantially that's it is inelastic or if interest rate declines investment will not increase substantially that is the inelasticity in your is curve 
then it can also be inelastic in the LM curve. Inelastic in the LM curve means that your money demanded does not also respond to changes in interest rate, meaning that your speculative demand for money does not actually respond to future expectations of changes in, in interest rates. So when one of them is inelastic, okay, if it's the IS curve that's inelastic, for example, if you take off fiscal policy measures, it will give you the same result, just like when it was unitary. But once your IS curve is inelastic, if you take up fiscal policy measures, if you take up expand, sorry, if you take up monetary policy measures, it will have a varying effect compared to when your IS curve was unitary. That means your elasticity of your IS curve determines the effectiveness of your monetary policy. All right. And then your elasticity of your money um, of your LM curve determines the effectiveness of your IS curve. So you need to understand that inter interchangeably. So that when you see a statement that is in a paragraph explaining that that market does not respond investments or explaining that investment highly responds to interest rates, that tells you that the IS curve is elastic. You should now know how monetary policy will respond or how effective will be monetary policy. You know, I started with the normal monetary policy, uh, essential monetary policy, blah, blah, blah. That's normal one you will know in your year one, year two. As a year three, we need to consider the elasticity of that your IS curve and your LM curve. Okay. So I think um, um, that's okay. Talks about um, this. 